Howdy y'all, this is AR Caffley. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to do a review on an updated version of the Augur Virtual Tabletop, which I had done on the previous version back in 2021. The new version has been recently released and expands a bunch of the features. And I've had a good time just recently getting to learn to know it and, and figure things out. And the new version is very adaptable uh, and it has a lot of capabilities in it. Now, I'll start off by saying that it is still under development. So there are even some things in the old version that the new one it hasn't been ported over yet, like some of the, a lot of the um, assets for like armor and weapon stuff things like things of that nature and the developer is constantly working to update when that's done who knows maybe i should <laughs> wait a little longer uh, but i know i had asked him about a couple of things and he was very responsive and so things will be being added as time goes on so let's uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into it Now, the first thing to know is that the Augur app is an online tool, which to me is, is a bit of a strike against it. If I get something, if I pay for something, I want to be able to use it whenever I want to, even if there's not good connectivity. However, I've never, ex except for a couple network times where nothing was really working, I've not had an issue the other bonus that it being online allows is that you can use it across multiple platforms. I can pull up whatever I do here on my phone. So if I'm stuck somewhere, I can, I can access the Augur app on my phone and you know run a mission, run through a dungeon, whatever. I would suggest doing all the building if if you plan on doing it that way i would suggest doing the building on the web browser just because you have more you know real estate on your screen and the windows all open up properly and it is just easier to manipulate the original 1.4 you can still get there here's our quick start menu um but if you select a new game, you can opt to go use the old 1.4. The 1.4 has the 5e, not rules in it, but character sheets and monsters from 5e that are statted out. Those have not been rolled over here. I'm, I'm not a 5e guy, so that doesn't really bother me too much. And I don't know if there are plans to do that. But if you have the old auger... You can still access it. So when you start, when you start a new game, it'll log in, and there's a, you know, there, there's a magic link when you when you buy it, and you click on the link and it'll log you in, and then whenever you go, it keeps that keeps your user info, and then it logs you in, and it will jump you to your last game or ask you what game you want to go to. In this particular case, I've decided to do just walk through the quick start because it's a review and a little bit of a tutorial, at least from what I found. The Augur has their own channel and they have a, a series of, of quick tutorial videos to go through. So when it starts, or if you have a game and you want to do an, uh, another one, you select the game settings and go to games click on games and these are the ones that you have already and i started this one just for this review this is review land first thing you do is you select a rule set if you want to use iron sworn or star forged which are really what this vtt is for 
Uh, and I guess I should mention this VTT, unless you're using some kind of you know, screen or PC sharing kind of thing. This is really designed for solo play. All right. If you want to, when you select which one of these you want, that will determine which oracles and which faux data and things get added in. For now, we're just going to go system agnostic. And so that doesn't fill anything. It doesn't give you any kind of default character sheet. Come down here, select OK. Select the theme. It's not really big, you know, much of a difference. It's just a little bit of color uh, difference. And then select the modules. Now, if you want to not worry about having to use the, the Starforged or Iron Sworn information, then you can just deselect those. Now, the, you know, those are excellent oracles and everything else. So if you want to use them, even if you're not playing Starforged or, Iron For uh, Starforged or Iron Sworn, you can still use that. But if you select, if uh, in this case, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just say that it's a, a fantasy game. The fantasy that selects the type of clothing and equipment that you can equip on your character sheet the type of monsters and foes that are uh, applied when it procedurally generates something and this game does procedurally generate a lot of a lot of stuff all right so we'll create our character Let's see i think i want to move him over over here all right so we're going to create our character as we can see here, it's just a uh, basically a paper doll, right? Just a paper doll. You can go in and whatever you select, like the type of pants or whatever, and once you click it, it will come up with a number of other options. Now he is, like I said, he is still working on adding weapons and different clothes and two-handed stuff because th those are all things that you can do in in the other version so it's just a matter of porting that that stuff over here and it is working or, or he is working on it uh, you can if you prefer if you have tokens and stuff that you use you can add your own avatars if you want I'm not going to do that in this case, but you can add it there. So if you have a token, like I said, uh, made from roll 20 or whatever, then you can just take that and make it part of your character. And whenever you see these arrows, these brown arrows, they'll either point left or down. Those are like kind of the go back to. We're going to accept. I'm going to do character name and I'm just Call him Tom Thumb and be good with that. Now we see down here that we have his character sheet. All right. We can use this button to decide whether we want to use, you know, the, the, the big or small pick on there. That's not really a big deal. What it comes with, the, the module without anything else, is you can select personality traits, and you can change, manipulate his equipment some. Not a lot. Not a lot you can do at this point yet. Uh, you can unequip it, and then it'll go back into the background or in, into his inventory. Now you can't adjust that inventory for a particular rule set or anything that I know of. And if you want to change anything later on, like I could, I could go and get him a, an axe. And now he's going to be equipped with an axe. And if I wanted to, I could go and pull that off, put into his inventory. Being system agnostic, it does, it does have the ability, and I'll show different ones that, that are more fully fleshed out, but you have the ability, once this character screen is open, to give them attributes statistics and uh skills 
and trackers. The st statistics and the skills basically work the same way. You name it, you tell it how to roll, and then you can click on the button and it will roll those things for you. So let's just, let's say he's got a strength of uh, 15. And we'll hit OK. And we'll say that he's got a skill of melee combat. And we can tell it to link, which is pretty handy. We can tell it to link to an attribute. So that if we roll melee, it will look to the strength information to modify that roll. And as you, as you see here, there are resolution mechanics. You can pick three. One is that there's none and you just roll. So if, if you have like a bunch of different target numbers, maybe things that you don't necessarily want to modify the sheet a bunch of times, you can just tell it to roll and it'll just tell you what it is. And you're playing solo, you can probably determine on your own whether it's a pass or a fail. Now you can use an option where it has a default number. Or if you're playing a system that's roll under, then it just does a comparison and it tells you if it passed or not when you click it. Trackers are your simple, simple things, health, uh, hit points, minimum value zero, and it defaults to five. We'll just say five is the max hit points that this guy can have. And now we go back. All of our attributes will start over here on this left-hand side. Hit points will be, or all of the trackers will be on the right-hand side. So he's up to, he's at his max hit points. Oh, and you can also, you can tell it to show the max value or not, which I usually do for the hit points. So we know he's got five of five hit points. Overview. Usually what I use the overview for, if there are any other game stats or like list of feats or things like that that don't fit on the buttons, then I'll put them here. And then at the bottom for the extended description, that's where you can like jot down the background, previous careers, things like that. All the other character -y stuff. All right, so we have this set to uh, give us the info. Now you have to, what this does, this window here that you populate, it, you populate the bonus from the attribute. So if you have a, if you have a, a game where the attributes are something like plus one, plus zero, whatever, you can just label it there. But if you're rolling, say like your typical six attributes for a character, then you, have to put, well, I guess you don't have to, but I put in the value right here that it's going to, that it's going to be as part of the button name. So here I know strength 15. I label the attribute strength colon 15. And then when I click on it, it gives me the bonus, uh, bonus information. This is, this is the basic bonus, say from his stat value, 15, uh, maybe that's plus one. And then if there was any other bonus, you might want to give the character for situation or being wounded, whatever. Then you roll, and it will come down here on the bottom and populate it. If it's over a particular value, then you can modify that in there as well. For skills, I'm going to click on melee, and it's going to. I'm just going. I'm not going to add anything else because if it's base, if it's a basic um, fighter, depending on the rule set, right? It, for whatever. So if he's like a third level fighter, maybe he has a melee value should be plus three, or if you bought points for three, you know. However, the game system works, and then you roll. Now we see here that it's, it gives us the roll, our melee value, and it automatically incorporates our strength value. And we can see that right there. 
So that's handy. And within those frameworks, you can do a bunch of different, you can do a bunch of different things. I recently messaged the dev, like I said, and he asked me about what I thought would be some good things to put on there. And so there are, he, he does plan on increasing the, the, the flexibility of the system agnostic character sheets to cover different types of games. And here in a here in a moment, I will go and show some of the some of the things that I managed to get done. I just go over the the basic interface here. Here you have vehicles or property. So in the you know in a medieval fantasy setting, you know it might be an airship you could put in there. It might be. Um, you know, I don't know, Baba Yaga's walking hut, you know, whatever. You can put it in there. And the thing with putting those in there is that you can add attributes to it as well. So if it has hit points or it, it, whatever, you can use that, that information. All right, now, the sci-fi version... Or uh, the sci-fi version has a big, a, a bunch of ships that you can add, and I will I'll go into this part a little more depth when we get there. Character list. This is the list of characters because you can make multiple characters if you're want a group or maybe you're doing some kind of you know West Marches type campaign where you have one character off doing something on Tuesday, another one off doing something on Thursday. You can put those different people. And if you want to add a new character, you just hit the Add button, and then you do the same thing. In most of these, in most of these menus, if you see this Add button, you're adding whatever it is, whether it's a location, uh, a table, whatever. Whenever you make a map, and actually, I think, where'd my quick start go? I think maybe I got rid of my quick start on accident. So we'll just come back over here. Under the game settings, that's where you select your games, quick start, all those things that you that it kind of starts with. Um, we're going to go open up the quick start, and we got to the create character. The next thing is to pick truths. This is really an Iron Sworn slash Starforged thing where I've, I've got it disabled or it's disabled because it doesn't use that module, but it's still on the checklist. If you have it, you go through and those games have questions, you know, how, how wh about why the world is the way it is. Uh, for that, we're going to skip it, but that that's part of the quick start for the intro. Uh, create main map. Now this is going to be the main map overall for the campaign world. So when you start, this is the big place you're going to be. When you're when you start, you can select the hex map, which is a procedurally generated, uh, like a, a hex crawl map. You can make it big or small. Change the number of hexes in it. Change the biomes. Change the level of vegetation and water in the highlands, all that stuff here. And you can hit reroll to give you different map seed. And it will procedurally generate the hexes, and it will put a number of ruins or towns in there. Again, kind of random, procedurally generated, and you can get rid of those. We'll go over some of the map, basic map operation here in a second. And just start playing. 
All right, now we've gone through the character creation. This is how we look at the characters. These are our map settings where you can select layers. I'll, I will go over those a little more on a different game I have set up just to, to show a little better. These three little dashes, these are, uh, that brings up your quick menu. All right. When you bring up here, this is going to randomly generate an NPC. When we hit characters, it'll bring up the characters. I'm just going to hit plus, and it's going to ask me for something. There are slots for culture, but you have to decide what they are. None are pre-programmed uh, pre in there, but you can basically it's a way of setting up different tags. So if so and so is part of the you know barbarian culture, then they may have different themes or occupations. All right, we will go ahead and we'll start with noble, and we see that it randomly generates two character traits. It gives us some information, and this is. This is kind of in the format of Iron Sworn or Star Forged, a more narrative, but the information is fine for any system that you want to, that you want to use in the system agnostic setting. If you don't like it, you just roll another. Okay, and it will come up with different different characters, different looks of those. And of course you can if you really want, you can, if you have someone in mind, you can tell it male, female. You can change their equipment. Now, one thing you can't do with these NPCs or the foes is you can't, in the system agnostic version, you can't give them attributes, at least not interactive ones like you can on the character sheet. No buttons. That's something that is on the list to be fixed. And it is something that was in the 1.4, so I I have no reason to think that it, it won't be fixed at some point here in the near future. So I'm going to hit accept. Alright, we've made this we made this NPC. Same thing with the locations. If we hit the plus button, we tell it what kind of location we want. Dungeon, city, whatever. We'll go ahead and let's do a, a ruins. And it will procedurally generate ruins. Give us some conditions, some appearances, and different zones within, and monsters. And all of these are things that once you create it, you can go back and change. Again, if you don't like it, you can roll another. It also, um, I think it hits... I think it's what taboos like dungeon generator and village generators to populate this little map. We hit accept. Okay, we've now made our dusty ruins, and we take it here. We drop it, and it gives us a you know little congratulatory window. Once you select the dusty ruins, you can now open the map. If you want to, say, move your move your guy in there. When you are moving around the map, if you're selecting an icon, you have to hold it for, I think it's like a second, a full second or a half second, before you can move it around. You'll see those drop to delete and drop to remove things there. Otherwise, if you, if you try to move them, first then you'll get this thing where you move the whole map around so just remember to do that on the map itself we have whatever map you're on you can change the information like here i'm gonna let's go ahead and do a snap to grid and then next when we put our guy there he will snap to grid If you want to put the monsters on there, you can just grab one of these guys and drop them on there. And then you can click your buttons and, and whatnot 
to perform your combat however you want to do it. Um, keep track of hit points. Whatever system you're going to use. The oracles and moves. Again, this is kind of... Well, I mean, it is part of the Iron Sworn and Starforged. But there are... You know, they're good if you're... Especially if you're playing solo. It has these descriptors built in. And it has a yes-no oracle. And you just hit the buttons and it gives you a yes or a no. If you are using Iron Sworn or whatever, you hit the moves. If, that, if those modules are loaded then it will come up and give you a list of the moves and if you've got them both selecting it'd be kind of confusing because some of the moves are a little different between iron sworn and starforged but they will come up here and you can click on them and they're fully interactive they have you know, it'll open up the table you click on the table right there in the window so those oracles are pretty cool Here's a dice roller, and it's pretty simple. You just drop drop them on there. If you want to roll them again one at a time, you just click it, or you can re-roll all. And you see down there, each time it'll give you a result. Now, the result is, of course, all the dice on there. One of the things I recently asked is for like the ability to... Um, have a little more of this functionality in the buttons to where you can select maybe multiple dice to roll per skill, like say in Savage Worlds where you have a skill die and a wild die, or in other games where you have like a bonus die, and to add exploding dice, which is something this doesn't have right now. But it's pretty handy, and it is pretty easy to use on your phone. I could close this down. Actually, I don't even have to close it down. I can leave it up here, go have to take the kids to soccer for four hours or whatever, and I can be up there in the bleachers uh, letting Tom Thumb run around and wreak havoc on the goblin hordes or, or whatever. This drawing toolbar basically just allows you to make maps or make lines on the maps. This is set to snap to grid. I can change... That so that's not snap to grid so that there's you know a little more option as to as to how you set them up. This is mostly for, I, I mean you could set it in, anywhere. You could use it like make it for, uh, you know trip lines, traps, whatever. What I have seen would be more useful, and and I think part of the main use for it initially is for making plot plots between planets or cities, you know, say if there's a, a road or something, you can use this on the overland map to do that. And then here's our codex. All right, whenever you make an a whenever you make a codex, you it's just a file folder. This is just your journal, which if you have solo played before, you know, is, is kind of important because it helps you keep track of stuff. So you can make it by chapter or by adventure. Uh, you could have the you could have the beginning be the um, you know it, it was a it was a dark and rainy night in uh, Hammerfell or whatever, which I never suggest starting off with writing descriptions of the weather, but uh, so be it. So it was a dark and rainy night. Now you could go, you know, you could make it by day, by session, whatever. If you're keeping track of the story, you could set up one that is the NPCs. Now a lot of the information for the NPCs are actually stored on the NPCs themselves. But it is an option. Now the assets library, you can you can download Avatars, bodies, maps, images, all all this kind of stuff. You can download those things. And at various points, it will let you use them. And I'll show you how I did that on a couple of these other ones pretty quick. I don't want this to drag out too terribly long. 
but that may be too late for some of you. <laughs> now it does have a, let's bring up our, one of our NPCs here, or I guess we can bring up our, we can bring up Tom Thumb. All of the, the characters and the locations, they have the ability to connect with chat GBT, GPT. Now you only have so many tokens for the when you buy the base version in and I'll, I'll be honest I don't remember what it was uh, but you only get so many and if you if you want more you can support on Patreon then you get a code uh, or a key that opens it up for more and if you there are instructions somewhere to get your own chat GPT if you want to pay for that service, but any kind of location or person or even some of the dialogue can be generated using this chat GPT link. So it has it has his basic information. Uh, I'm just going to click it, see if it'll let me. I don't use it that often because I don't have any keys or anything like that, and I, it's not something that I I feel the need to buy but it is pretty it, it's a pretty good interface or a pretty good uh option and so there's chat gpt just writing it down like i said this can this it can write a background for city it can write a background for npcs anything that has a description box in it okay and, and you can see here that it is using these character traits as seeds on how to write it. Um, let's see, it said he was, um, he was manipulative and deceitful, so not the, you know, not the greatest uh, heroic personality, but it comes back and it tells him it tells some of the information, so, you know, his background, what he's up to now. So that's pretty cool. It, it's an option that is built in. And if you want to put information, um, you can you can actually ask the chat gpt to do things for you as well our let's see not our assets where are ah here we go all right so on our quick menu we can design foes It'll come up and give us a list of the foes. And if you ever want to just look at something that is, if you know what it's called, you can do a search for it. Or if you want it to be something that you have made, then you can change this user only to true and false. These are two icons that I made or that I uploaded and then made the monsters. If you're looking at your foes, just like everything else, you hit the plus sign and it comes up and you can select an image and you can select text and you can generate information with chat GBT on this as well. So that that's pretty handy. And one of the bigger handy things that you can do is you can make tables. All right. Now, it has all of the tables built into it that it uses for procedural generation, right? If it's going to make the Necromancer Zones, the Well of Souls, whatever, these are all tables that it uses to make those things. But you can make your own tables. You can select down here where it's only the tables that you made. Now, this particular table I input to be like a, a Savage Worlds deck for initiative
And when you're making the table, you can weight everything. So if you have something that's going to happen more often than not, you put it in more places on the table. Like in this, everything, since there are four suits for all the cards, everything has four places on the table. Although I didn't break it up by suit. But the Jokers only have two. Right, so you could make a deck of you can make a deck draw initiative that way. Just make a table. If you have tables from a particular game that you want to incorporate, you can put those in there. One of the handy things that it does, if you're going to add, make your own new table. You can go one at a time and add the entries or you can do a bulk entry where everything is just separated by comma, comma separated variables, right? So if you have a, say a long table or a list of names, say, you can just cut and paste them one at a time or not cut and paste them one at a time, but set them into a say a single line or paragraph cut and paste the whole paragraph in there and each entry that it has separated by a comma it will turn into the table uh, so we'll just do blue comma red comma yellow comma chameleon and etc and we hit ok Right now, everything that was separated in there, it puts it in the table. And then when you're done with the table, it's perfectly usable like that. So that's pretty handy. There are a lot of tables in, especially since, you know, I have role, you know, since I do a lot of role playing, I have lots of role playing tables, oracles and things like that that I can input and use all of my use all of my own. All right, and then I just roll it, yellow, etc., blue. So that is a powerful and handy tool that comes with this. And that is the basic, that's the basic operation. Your current location is highlighted right here. And you go back to your main map by clicking that. And that takes us back to our main hex map that we generated. Now we're just going to run through some of the things that I have done on this, mostly just playing around at this point. All right. This is Sacrifice. This is an OSR game. So, you know, a D&D &D game that's based on, it has its setting where the character is a... Uh, he he ex he escaped a sacrifice and now he's kind of on the run this is the this is a map from that from that book all right what i did is i just added the map so if i come down here and locations and if i go to the select location type map from image all right if you do this it'll show all the maps that are kind of in there if you do it here then it's only the ones that you selected you tell it add map image and then you can upload from your file or whatever you upload from from that and then now this is our This is our main map right here from for uh, Nia, and I'll be doing a review on the Sacrifice game here in a bit. This is the main map. On the main map, you can add locations, and when you do the add location, it's just like everything else. You add it, you tell it what kind you're going to add. Now in this particular case, I added another map from an image. And when I select that, it will open up here, and I can open the map up from here, or I can open the map up from here. 
this is the map that this is a map that is also from the book. And for my map settings, I went from you can go from tile to hexes, whatnot, change the color on those things. Now, each one of these, the game itself, Sacrifice, has kind of the standard six mile across hex for, for your hex crawl information. All right now, of course, here, this map doesn't come with hexes. Like I said, I put them on there. Uh, I changed that map size so that I could get six hexes across in each one of these hexes. So that's going to be, that's 30, 30 miles across. And if you want to do a hex crawl, all you do is you add the region, and when you add it, you tell it to randomly generate a hex map, and then you decide the size. And so now I'm inside that big hex with the little hexes. So each one of these hexes are the six mile across hexes, the standard hex crawl kind of thing. Now it put in, it randomly put in this sun, these sun bleach ruins. I could take them away if I want to. And anything, actually anything on the map, you can you can take away. So you hold it, you, you click on it, press your left mouse button, and you can drop to remove it, and it will take it off of the map. Or you can drop to delete it. And I'm just going to tell it to delete everything, because I, I didn't really want that there particularly. And it gets rid of anything. If you make a city... Like in this case, the city of Stenberg is on the map. I created a Stenberg city, and I populated it with information from the book. Uh, there's the governor. And there are things that are going on, the troubles, what the, the different characters want. And then you can also change the information there. You can add more NPCs. One cool thing that you can do is you can make someone a bond. Let's see. That's some other NPC somewhere. And all you have to do is just drag them over into the bond. And you'll see that places have bonds as well as NPCs. So you can... I may not be able to drag her over, but you can drag the characters over, and now it shows him as having a bond in this city. All right, so from here you see you can do a, um, you can do the the hex crawl. I couldn't the I couldn't get the hexes just from the the mapping information. I could not get the hexes small enough to where they would be six miles across and still match like the scale that's given on this map. But with that procedurally generated uh, app that it has there, you just, you can make these things and drop them, drop one per hex, one per 30 mile hex, and it will have We'll have our uh, five hex across. Give us, you know, so that it matches. And of course, you don't have to have it to match, but I was testing this thing just to make sure, you know, just to kind of push it to see what it could do. And just to show off some of the other type of games that I made. This game is the... Cepheus engine slash traveler and it, it doesn't come with it but I added the skills and I added the attributes for the trackers here you can have one if if you like the uh, some of the newer ones that add like a total health 
or you can have trackers based on each stat. So if they, you know, say she takes, you know, four hits or whatever to her strength, you can keep track of it right there. These are set up so that they uh, roll versus the, the typical eight or higher. Now, of course, you'll notice that the target, because it's from the button, you can't tell it equal or higher. You just tell it higher. So the target is higher than seven, which is eight or higher. All right. Then I can do the same thing with driving. I can give it a target number. Say I want to you know, make it more difficult or... I can give her a penalty because the road condition and, you know, whatever. That's a fail. All right. This is her, her ship, the Beowulf. I'm going to open that guy up. And from here, you can do the same thing, like I was saying. You can give it attributes. So you can give it armor. You can give it hits, hole points, however you want to do it. You can give it jump light, you know, um, it's, it's jump value, how far it can jump. You can give it the trackers. And if you wanted to have the combat just in space, you could put the character's appropriate skills on there so you don't have to go back and forth. You know, so if you have one character who's the gunner, you just use that as the as the gunnery skill and we change that to you know 2d6 or or whatever system you're whatever system you're using and now when we've got our ship out there we can say okay we're going to shoot and we got a six as we go and look at our locations all right, I've made, I'm having a little issue. I think I saved something wrong, and now the main star map, I'm having trouble hitting it. Um, but I did it, so it must have been something I've got, <laughs> I've got selected wrong. But on that main star map, I had these different planets. So you can populate a sector. You can make that, you know, if you want it to look more traveler, make it look hex hex wise and you can you can actually change it if you wanted to look like a standard traveler uh, subsector map you could change it so that's the right number across there now as I click on the planet of Veil, vale, it tells me some information here is the procedurally generated map there and so I can either open the map here or open it there and now I'm on the planet now this is the overall. If you really wanted to get get to it with these hex hex maps, you can add hexes. You can delete the hexes if, or change it to something else. And what you really could do is you could you could fill up all these things and however you wanted and then maybe cut out V's at the, <laughs> at the top and bottom and make it look like the the typical traveler oh they call that the the the, the mercator the the triangles the the flattened out map that they have for those and then each one of these hexes these main hexes then you could just in you could add a smaller area like we did like we did on the other one a uh, uh, randomly generated hex map, change the number of hexes based on how much you, you know, how, how many hexes should be across in the regional versus local hexes, a la Traveler. And then you could have each one of those popped in one of those uh, big hexes. So uh, a lot of, a lot of cool options. There's settlements you can add there. Or actually, you want to generate it first, save it, and then you can drop that settlement on there. All right. So really cool stuff that you can do all of those. And now I'm just going to run through the, uh, the different types of games. So that was the Traveler. 
Here's the basic role playing Call of Cthulhu type character sheet. Now I think it probably works a little better if you use the versions that have the um, the percentile stats instead of the the three die six or four die six stats. So that you would, if you had the old one, if if I remember, you made a stat test by multiplying it by five anyway and that was your target number so if you just do that front load it then now you've got you've got all this all right so you health spirit points or power points uh, then here you've got skills and then you just roll to see if you hit Uh, Tricube Tales, if you follow my channel, you know I've, um, I'm pretty fond of that particular game. This is one of the dungeons. If I look at the character sheet for this one, you select which one is your three die version, which is your strong version, uh, whether or your archetype, whether it's Agile, Brawny, or Crafty. And with these, the target is typically five, but you can modify it up or down. Do the rolls and you can keep track of resolve and karma as a tracker now this particular one uh, the the rule set doesn't have a skill list per se just you have the ability to select perks and quirks and then you can just mark them there and then this is what a star forged looks like now that's what the map should look like here are our the the routes between planets that were generated here's the character ship here's the character and when you do star forged in in this version if you do star forged or iron sworn it has the 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 stats for those games already all right you can see it does our uh two dice our challenge die versus our action die versus our two challenge die and it comes up and tells you if it's a strong hit a weak hit or a miss and then this that allows you to spend momentum to change it just by clicking that and it will reset your momentum I had one up for Savage Worlds. It didn't work quite as well, but with this dice tray, you can you can make it work. Uh, just not as fluid, not as uh, automated, if you will, but still possible. And then the last one we'll look at is the um, we looked at the at the other at the other things, but um, the sacrifice, this OSR game we didn't really look at how the character was made i guess maybe we did no anyway so in that uh that game it allows you to roll advantage or disadvantage which is something that you can select when you're making the attribute or the skill rolls so i'll roll i'll roll advantage for strength now I, it was uh default 15 and actually there the target, again, if you have to roll something or over, you have to change that target so that it's one less. So that, that would have been a success. But uh, that particular game, you keep track of corruption. And DL is its armor class. It calls it that uh, for some reason. And then in the overview, it just keep track of the proficiencies. If you have, If you're making a skill list, Anything that you roll is basically a skill. So if you, it will alphabetize everything. So th this is the list of skills that come with the, the, the game. Uh, with this sacrifice game. If you want something to stay at the top, so like say for initiative, 
If you don't want it to get shuffled down in there, just put the one in front of it. And so the initiative, not a great initiative, healing rate, whatever. Um, and in the in the case for something like this, you have melee, and you can you can tie it to the attribute, so it would be tied to strength. Or if you were using one of his finesse weapons to uh, dexterity, but you you make the melee action and the ranged action as skills and anything you want at the top. Like I said, you can just uh, enumerate them and they will stay up there. And then anything else you can follow along. Now what I did is I put all of that. I, I just put all of the skills in there. Um, one of the other things I asked for was that you could make a template. So if I made a character and I want to make another one, I wouldn't have to manually go in and put those in there. Uh, I think that's on... He agreed that was on his list of things to do, or that he would do. And that that was one that I that I wrote. That was not ChatGBT. I made that one up for my character from the tables in the game. Anyway, we're getting a little long in this long in the tooth with this video, but that is Augur. I'll put the links and stuff down in the bottom. They're they're not affiliates or anything. I um, just like the game, like the the product, so I thought I'd make a a video. And it's been a while since I made a video. My next video will probably be reviewing that uh, OSR system called Sacrifice. I hope that was useful. Uh, go ahead and you know support the. Uh, support the dev, support the auger if it sounds like something that might be helpful to you in your solo role-playing. And uh, happy gaming.